Okay, so today I'm going to build a analog third-person camera controller in P5JS, and I did a video on this yesterday, but I wasn't very clear and didn't really get into the camera stuff very much, so I want to do a better job of that today. So I'm going to create a WebGL environment in P5 by doing create canvas <clears throat> with height WebGL do it like 600 by 400 and then we're going to the first thing I want to do is draw the coordinates so we'll do typically um, use red green and blue for your X Y and Z axis so we're gonna do that here and draw a 3d line so from the origin to 10. Okay, maybe we'll make that 100. <clears throat> cool. And I'm also going to turn on orbit control, which allows you to just click and drag around the screen, and you'll be able to change the orientation of things. So we need a couple more lines to finish off our coordinate system. So we'll do one for the Y axis and one for the Z axis. And now you can see this is the default view as you're looking straight down at the scene. So the camera is located up in the Z direction and you're looking down at the XY plane. Now it's also really weird that for some reason it's not a right-handed coordinate system. It's a left-handed coordinate system. If you're familiar with right-handed, left-handed coordinate systems, like you point in one direction with your hand and then curl your fingers and then uh, your thumb points up. So like this would be your coordinate system where this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. So that's a right-handed coordinate system, but this is actually a left-handed coordinate system. So for whatever reason, um, it's just something to keep in mind when working in P5, that that's the default. We could just flip it to a right-handed coordinate system if we wanted to by doing scale negative one, one, one. So that scales everything in the negative x direction. And then we get a right-handed coordinate system. I think I'm just going to leave that alone for now, though, because I'm kind of used to it the way it is. Um, and it usually doesn't really matter too much because as long as you keep your frame of reference in mind, blah, blah, blah. OK, so there already is a camera in the scene as soon as we're using WebGL, which I actually didn't realize that until yesterday when I was doing this. I had, in the past, I've done like create camera, which is something, but you can actually just do camera and you can set the location <clears throat> with the first three variables. So I would do something like maybe zero, 500, 500. And then you can tell it where the origin is and you don't have to tell it it's just setting the camera origin so basically whatever th these values are these will be relative to this origin so if you made this origin something like this it does it does that right it makes um, it moves everything relative to that point. So you're telling it the origin is wherever you want, zero, zero, zero. And this is important because we're going to later tell it, we're going to tell the camera that the origin is where the player is so that it's always um, rel same distance relative to the player. So when the player moves around, the camera like follows. OK, <clears throat> and now the last three values are the orientation of the camera. So you're going to want to put those like that. And that would be, this should be Z pointing up. Look at those. Does that make sense? Um, for some reason, it's backwards. So you go negative one, and that means Z is pointing up. That's at least my interpretation of it. So like, this is the what's called the up vector. 
So this tells it what up is. So you could have it like at an angle. Maybe you can't. <laughs> mm, that's weird. Interesting. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So now green is up-ish. Anyway, we're going to see more of this in a second, I think. Well, we probably won't actually because for the most part, the cameras get, our up vector for the camera should be the same. We're just going to rotate the camera. We're not really going to um, tilt it like that. But we will get some automatic movement when the character jumps. We're going to see that the camera will automatically follow the player, and that's because we're going to be using look at... Uh, Right. Camera dot look at. I don't think this is it. <laughs> How did I do this yesterday? Easy. So look at tells you the camera exactly what it sounds like where to look. Hmm. I, I guess it maybe always looks at the, maybe this is the look at. Let me look at what camera is actually. I thought I had this right. <clears throat> so X, Y, Z, camera position, coordinate represent center of the sketch. So I guess it always looks at the center of the sketch essentially because as you can see in this example, the camera definitely tilts up to follow his motion. And I think that's because it's telling it the center of the sketch is here. Makes sense to me, I think. Um, okay, so we don't need to look at. Let's just do this. And now I want to add a ground plane so that we have some frame of reference. So I'm going to add a ground plane and I'm going to give it a texture to make it look like uh, I used a chessboard the other day, which seemed to work pretty well because it gives it just some idea of where things are. So let's do that. All right, so now we're gonna have to preload the image function, preload, and we'll say chess equals load image of chess.jpg. And then down here, we can just use that image directly as a texture, using giving it the variable that we called it, which was chess texture, and then plane. We'll do 50 for now. We'll do 500 for now. Okay. Sweet. Okay, now this was something I encountered at the end of the last video, which I think was why is this no longer being drawn? And it definitely has to do with this. Yeah, the texture. So how do you like cancel a texture? Maybe it was just fill. That works. Okay, so now we have the coordinates back. See, for some reason, when you give it a texture, it's like still using the texture and that overrides the stroke information. To make this more obvious, I could do, increase the stroke weight to stroke weight of five or something. And then I'll turn the stroke off for the plane, no stroke. Cool. So orbit control is nice because you can also zoom with the mouse wheel. It's not very responsive sometimes. You have to really like crank it for some reason, at least with my mouse. Maybe that's a me problem. 
but here we go. Okay, so now we've got a plane. And next, we, I wanna show you guys how we can move the camera. So we're gonna use this function, camera again, which is just accesses the camera in the scene, the current camera in the 3D sketch. So we're gonna use that function all over the place, actually probably in just one place. And we're gonna change the location <clears throat> to be dependent on the mouse. So just for example, if I did something like mouse X, mouse Y, you can already see it's kind of working. So we're getting some motion here, but all we're doing is moving further away. So we're moving the positive Y and Z, or sorry, Y and X direction. Z is constant at 500. And we're just moving away from it. And that's not what we want. We want to move in a circle around it. So to do that, we're going to need some sine and cosine stuff. So we want something like this. So let's say this is our camera we're going to want to and this is where our camera is located so we want a constant value which is like our distance from the scene and how close or far away the camera is and then so the X component of this would be the cosine of distance, Dist or sorry, distance times cosine of whatever this angle is. And then same idea for the Y component. It's going to be distance times sine of theta. Okay, and so this should give us a nice camera moving around the center. So hopefully it'll move in a circle and let's give that a try. So we need some value Ah, so the, the theta value, we need the theta value to change over time so that the camera will move. So, and that theta value, we want it basically to be controlled by the mouse position. And in this case, I think we don't care about, uh, we could care about the Y position. Maybe we'll use the Y position of the mouse for the Z. That would be kind of cool. So we could do like, maybe like 200 plus mouse Y. Oh, but Y is, mouse Y is down. So as we go down, we're going higher. That's probably not what we want. So we would want minus mouse Y. And that way, when we go up, we can tilt up. And then I wanna go, when I go left, right, I wanna move in a circle around the player. So to do that, we could define a variable. We say let theta, let cam theta equal mouse x. And because theta 
goes from like zero to pi and pi is only like about three, 2.14, right? Um, we don't want to use mouse x directly because mouse x is like hundreds. It's like the, at least 800 because it's 400 this way and negative 400 this way. So we're gonna to wanna to use like mouse x divided by like 100, maybe even 1000 to keep this value small. And then we're gonna feed this value into here. So we want some distance, right? We were doing 500 before, let's keep that. 500 times cosine of cam theta. And 500, and we could probably make a variable instead of 500. But for now we'll leave it as a hard coded in there. Sine of cam theta. Nice. See, so now we got some good rotation and we can move up and down some. Which is cool. Okay, so the next thing is player movement. If we wanted things to move around, or a player to, player to move around. And I'm actually gonna take out this for now because it's a bit too much in my opinion. I think we don't really need it. I'm just gonna leave it like this so that there's no vertical change. This is a bit more manageable so you don't have to think so much when you're moving left and right to keep it steady. Um, okay, so now we're going to want to do something with the player movement, and I'll, I'll maybe just do that in the next video. So that, that was it for this, for just how to move a camera around a point, at least. And I hope that helped. And the code for this will be in the description of the video. Thanks.